and go to Matt for the uh, Amerisite Psychology. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, a few months ago, uh, the Lackawanna Trail School District was uh, contacted by Amerisite that, that sort of uh, sets up contracts to for uh, building the cell phone towers. And uh, Lackawanna Trail um, right now is interested in possibly pursuing this. Um, we, when I first got the call, um, Keith and I together, I feel like we know Barb for, but we just mentioned five minutes ago. Yeah, but we've talked so many times on the phone and Rick and, and, Rick and group conversations and so forth. But thank you for all the communication. Um, so one of the things that we we're looking at just started in a committee. Um, Keith and I brought the idea of generating revenue to our budget and finance committee. Dr. Murphy was a part of that committee as well to see if this was something that we want to bring to the full board. There are financial benefits, there are pros and cons, um, and that budget and finance committee uh, gave the thumbs up and said bring it to the full board. Uh, last month we, we, we did that, and uh, the board has a template of the uh, lease agreement that we're looking at possibly voting on next week. Our solicitor at the end, John Audie, uh, reviewed it, and uh, some people gave individual questions. So. Uh, what we're doing tonight is giving uh, Barb an opportunity to take a few minutes and kind of overview the process of how this would, if we were to, uh, <coughs> the board were to uh, sign this agreement to move forward, how that works, what would happen next, uh, what typically happens, and we have a few people from the public here. Uh, we want to give the public the opportunity to ask questions and, and the board as well. So, Barb, if you could take a few minutes and kind of overview sure. the process of how this might look. Sure. Um, my name is Barb Barba. My company is Amerisite. So if I had my back today, I don't want to do that. Um, my company is Amerisite Wireless Development, and I actually develop towers for tower companies. So it would not be my tower. It would be for another tower company, which is Tower North, which is what's on your lease. So I just want to verify or clarify that a little bit. Um, basically what happens is we find an area. I get coordinates, longs and laps, and they say find me something in that area because a carrier is interested in that area. And I understand you have a few dead zones around here that um, people have been telling me that they need filled in. So what I do is I drive around or I, I Google Earth, drive around, and I find the site that I, I can put a tower on. I like to go to schools or fire companies or you know municipalities, wherever I can get where the taxpayer money is going in to try to recoup some of that financial money back. So for me, as soon as I see a school, I go to the school if it fits within my search coordinates. So that's why I approached the school district, because they did fit within the search coordinates and it wasn't a good area for the uh, elevation at the same time. So basically the process will be that if the lease is signed, they'll pass that on. It is an option to lease because it gives us a year to do the development and any soil testing, anything that might have to be done zoning, jurisdiction-wise. And then after that, they would build the tower with carrier interest. So after the tower was built, then there would really, really be nothing to do with the tower except the tech might stop by once or twice a month just to check that the equipment's working okay. So I'm open to any questions you guys may have. I did read some of the comments on uh, a couple pages, and I think they were all pretty positive from the community here. So I, I don't know if I can answer any questions for you. I'm sure. I know you mentioned it before, but mm -hmm. in public, the, the tallest tower you would possibly build. Yes, the tallest tower would be between 150 and 199. And I save that because anything over 199, anything over 200, then we have to light for FAA regulations. And we don't like to do that if we don't have to. There's a lot more involved in it, and a lot of people don't like that light that's constantly on. So we try to stay below that just because the communities like it better when it's not lit. So depending on how much carrier interest there is, they may build it at 150 with an expandable top in case they would get more interest in the future, then they could build it up to 199. So it will be between 150 and 199. Okay. And is that going to be a relay, or is it going to be to offer dead zone? You know, to clean this, up the yeah, dead the zone. sites that I'm working on are called strategic sites, and they're called strategic because they're not necessarily capacity. So let me explain the difference. A capacity site would be in a in a major metropolitan area where everybody stops at a red light and picks up their phone, and the towers can't sustain all the all the power that they need. So that would be a capacity site. These are strategic sites. And they're strategically placed by the carriers so that they don't have gaps in service. In a rural area like we are out here, which I mean, I know we're not really rural, but it's somewhat rural, 
they don't have to have as many towers as close. So they'll put a strategic tower in to try to cover the gaps between their other towers. So that's what I'm working on, strategic sites. You can ask. Um, and obviously the school district gets a monetary benefit for that. Yes, correct? yes. And we offer either rent on monthly or they can take a one-time lump sum. So, and I, I don't know exactly what we're doing exactly, but I think we're going to do the lump sum. Yeah, we're looking at the lump sum. And I, I want to be clear because uh, there were some <coughs> uh, different um, issues or options that were presented. And I want to be clear, we're looking at, uh, I'm recommending that we hire more security in the future. As people here know, we, we have a, a, someone on staff now who's armed and, and floats between the buildings. We're looking at getting a full-time SRO, and whether we have, my recommendation is whether we have to pay that in full or whether we have to pay that um, in part if Dalton puts in money or if we can get grants, some subsidies. We're going to do it anyway. But you know, if we're able to get, for example, $150,000 lump sum from Marisite, um, that's going to cover that SRO, even though, but I want to be clear, um, because that has been out there, saying, well, if you don't get the tower, are you not getting a school resource officer? My answer is no. That's going to happen anyway, but why not earmark that money as best we can to help cover part of that? So I think it's a win-win. Um, I've looked at the pros and the cons. Uh, it's my recommendation that the board do this, but again, the, the public, as Mrs. Lee is talking, um, yeah, that, that money, if we get a grant that covers that SRO, then we're not using the Marisite money for that, but it's going to be used for something else. So yes, there's a financial benefit to it. The gaps that you're talking about, Barb, mm -hmm. uh, cell phone coverage up there, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi in general, is very bad, so mm -hmm. we look at that. He couldn't be here tonight, but Gene Ziak, who, who is the Emergency Management Coordinator in Wyoming mm -hmm. County, um, uh, tried to get here, but he wasn't able to. But and he strongly supports it with, with the, it's going to make safety, um, first responding, things of that nature, easier because of having, you know, they, they want a satellite dish on that tower. And I don't know if he contacted you or not, but I- He has I not did. yet, but that is one of the things that, and I will say that I do, I develop towers all over the nation. And I've probably developed 20 to 30 school towers. And it's 50-50. Sometimes they'll say they want to you know, do a new football stadium and they'll take the lump sum. Sometimes they want just enough money to cover something that they have budgeted and it covers that cost every month. So it is 50-50 whether or not you take lump sum or take the, the monthly amount. But it is always a good thing to mention that it is for public safety. So the more towers you have in an emergency situation where power outages and you know, hurricanes, one tower goes down, the other one can pick up, it's always better to have more in the area, especially in a rural area. And I think we all found that out with uh, Sandy when it came through on the East Coast. You know, there just weren't enough towers in the area. But public safety is a big issue, and it's always better to have the technology, too. Once you have a tower, you can usually keep the technology, which gives your children a better benefit if they, you know, grow up, go to college. They have the same technolo technology benefit as somebody who's in a very, very rural, uh, I'm sorry, urban area. So. And my, my point on that with emergency, emergency management, Yes, the school will benefit monetarily. Yes, it's going to do, but the community itself will benefit. I mean, when when they read the newspaper that we were considering this, EMA said, "Get it, and we want in." And, and they know the risk. They know the microwave. They know those situations. So, I'm looking at it as a benefit to the school and the taxpayers and to the community surrounding us as well. Do you Ryan. have I'm do you have different designs or what? What are you looking at as far as design? Yeah, the design of this tower will be a monopole. And they do monopoles because, first of all, it's the best structural uh, safety issue when you put that type of a tower up. If you have a guide tower and you have the wires, it's just not as safe as a monopole. It's sturdier, it's just better. Plus, they can expand it if they need to. So it will be a monopole, which means that it's around and it just goes straight up. It's not a lattice one and it's not a guide one with the wires on. So the way that, oh, I'm sorry, the way no. that it will be set up, if you can just let me finish, yep. um, they'll put it inside a compound. We call it a compound. So we'll lease some space. I, I think we're 100 by 100 in your lease. And inside that 100 by 100 area, they will put the tower. They'll build a fence around it. The fence will be locked. On top of that fence, there'll be barbed wire so that nobody can crawl over the fence, so that nobody can enter the tower, try to climb it, whatever you know, other safety issues you may want to have. And that's usually run by your jurisdiction too, even though we do it on every tower across the country. 
the jurisdictions say you have to do certain things. We may have to plant flowers or, or trees around it or you know something like that too, depending. But usually it's within a compound with a locked gate. So I don't know if that answered your question. Well, I guess, what's it gonna look like? The tower itself? The, yeah, I mean, I'm gathering from our conversation here, we're talking like the one that was placed up in Court Summit where they have a flag off of it or I something see. like that. And you say monopole? Um, I should have brought a picture, I guess. A monopole is just a straight tower. Just it looks a straight like a pole. Straight pole, metal pole that goes straight up. It gets bigger at the bottom and smaller at the top. All right, mm -hmm. so it doesn't look like the old-fashioned traditional. No, the four blades or three legs. Not that's a lot of work with the four blades. And no, those are called self-supporters, and they don't do them as often anymore. There's too much metal involved, and um, the climbing gear doesn't stay on as well for the climbers. So they just do monopoles, unless it's um, in some areas where the weather is severe, then they'll do bigger self-supporters. But this area doesn't have right. to worry about that. If the school district did uh, shoot you down on putting it on our, our property, would you then go to the neighbor and see if they were like well, in the same vicinity? In, in full disclosure, I've had probably 20 calls from people in the area, not all fitting within my search range. So we will go somewhere, absolutely. I mean, if they want the tower, so if we if we turn you down, in essence, you can so go. We'll pack them up. Yes, exactly. Thank you. If we turn yeah. you down, in essence, you can go. 100 foot away literally and build it on yeah. someone else's With, property. Within an eighth of a mile, I've had four offers. Okay. So, and what we do, just so you understand what my job is, I go around and I get candidates and I pick the top three candidates that I think fit within the search ring, within the terrain, within the elevation, within what they're actually looking for, and then from there I kind of negotiate. And um, in this situation, I kind of stayed with the school most of the time because I really, in my heart, my degree is in education, so I always try to help out schools if I can. And um, I've had people call me, which is unusual. I'm usually knocking on doors, but in this situation, I think once it was advertised I was coming, everybody looked me up and gave me a call. So, yes, I, I will go somewhere. I'm hoping that it can be on the school property. This is right. So who will pay the taxes in the lease? Who's going to pay the taxes on this tower? Yes. If I, I believe your school is exempt from taxes, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's, it's income tax does not apply in this situation. It's it will. Be, it's up to the Wyoming County Commissioners. Yes. In Lackawanna County, they will tax. Okay, so what happens? They will tax. The county commissioners will make sure it's assessed. There's an assessment on it. Mm -hmm. And so they assess the height of the tower, they assess the gravel, they assess the fence. Yes. And it's a yearly property tax bill. And what will happen, and, and it's in the lease, it actually, the lease. that if there's a difference in your tax, so let's say you normally pay zero, but they tax the tower at $100, the company pays yeah. the $100. All that we have to do is get the school district to send us that bill, because it will come to the property owner, we won't see it, and then that property owner, it's in the lease, that they have the obligation to give it to us within so many, I, I think, think it's 30, 30 years, days. 60, yeah. we can even change it to 60. But I hope it would not say $100, I hope it would say whatever the property tax is. It says the yeah. difference. It whatever does. it is, the difference in the tax, the company pays. And they pay their own utilities, they, everything, the school pays nothing. So if it does go up and it is assessed, then we pay, and it's already in the lease and covered. What about liability insurance? Uh, we cover liability insurance. Um, we do what's called a certificate of insurance with the school, and the school back with us, and everybody's covered the whole way around. They cover, I don't know what's in that two policy, million, it's like $2 million in the per, per incident yet. So we don't incur any more cost? No, nope, no cost whatsoever. The tower company pays all the costs up front, in the back, the whole way through, they pay all the costs. The only, the only thing you have to do is to collect the money. And that's not just the school district, that's anybody. So I'm, right now I'm working on 35 sites, and 35 landlords will give us a tax paper and say this is the difference in my taxes, and we'll pay it. The company, Tower North, will pay it. So that's who builds it, is Tower North? Okay, so the hierarchy is Centerline Communications is the parent company. Tower North is their tower division. I'm a site developer, so I come in and I get the sites. I turn it over to Tower North, and they build the site. Center Line Communications is the head of all of it. So, I don't know if that's clear. Do they use local labor? Um, sometimes they put it out for bid. Sometimes this company has its own construction wing, so they'll just tell their guys that's where you're working this week. But sometimes they do put it out for local bid. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it depends. Is it unionized labor? Um, only if it's jurisdictionally allowed, because there aren't a lot of union labors that do what we do. 
So if there are union laborers that climb towers and they use them, I've never been anywhere that there are. So typically <coughs> they use, um, you know, their crews that they rely on that are OSHA trained and certified. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. They have to be certified, like five different certifications. So. What about the materials that go in the tower? Are they made in the USA? You know, for the most part, I'm going to say yes, because the, I believe, and I could be wrong, but there's a tower company in Pennsylvania that makes towers, and usually the tower company will try to buy it at the closest place possible, because shipping a tower across from Nebraska or China doesn't make any sense. So they'll bring it up from, uh, it's by Seven Springs, there's a company. I'm imagining that's where they would get it. They might bring it out of New York, I don't know. There's a bunch of tower companies. I believe Hazleton even has a tower company, so it could come from there. But I can't guarantee that. That's what usually happens. Why well, only $150,000 once? Like, for how many years will this be operational? Um, the, the term of the lease, the first term, is five years. Five years. Okay. So ten, we, we upped it to ten with your lease. So ten years initial oh. term. And then after that, we renew it for every five years if the carrier still wants to be on it. So um, we offer a monthly amount, and if they don't take the monthly, they take the one time. So that was the school's decision to do the one time. 150000 for the lump sum, and so for the contracts for 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's not much money. That's $15,000 a year. The, the very competitive I dream for power leasing is, and I've done some research on it, and we do have the option for a monthly, and we have made a final decision versus monthly versus one-time payment, we'll have to look at what the needs are for the school, and this is a one-year option to look into it, and we have some time to decide on what, how we're going to take the payment, and that'll be in the administration to review whether a monthly lease will meet our needs versus a one-time payment, but um, that is a competitive rate um, based on my market research, and uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but different things have different values. The value of power leasing space. I think everybody thinks there's so much money in the tower company. The tower company really kind of gets the raw end sometimes because they come in and put all the money up front, they build the tower, and then the carrier pays them a rent to go on the tower, or the public safety pays them a rent to go on the tower. So they kind of perform, you think of it like an apartment building, they rent out the space on the tower. However, they put all that money up front into the construction and they pay the rent every month for the ground lease. So, carrier or not, they're obligated to do that. That's why rural electric is also expensive because you're not getting the money per mileage right. that you would get in an urban center. Right. And I do want to mention, just because I was told today, if you do the monthly, we stick with that lease. If we do the one-time lump sum, we may have to switch to a different document. Most of the terms are the same, but remember I said that one section would have to come out because that section comes out, a few other ones are altered, but we'll give you plenty of time to review that document and, you know, and the option really kind of holds the property, not the lease, if you know what I mean. So we'll give you plenty of time to look at that document, too. Mm -hmm. I, have a couple, I just want to make sure that I understand. If, if we choose not to go with you, you could easily just go to one of the neighbors. You can go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. How large of an area are you looking at? Like, uh, out to, cause you, I saw a couple of plans for us, and it was like three-quarters of a mile between one side and the other of our property. Mm -hmm. So you could probably go out, what, a mile or whatever? No, they tell me to stay within a half mile of my search ring. And I'm at my end here from where my search ring is. I'm almost at my end at, at this, you know, the north, south, east, and west. I'm at my end with the school district here. However, sometimes they'll stretch it a little. They can turn the antennas a different angle and go a little further. Do you know what I mean? So if we find the perfect property, they'll make it work. Um, but my search ring says half a mile. Sometimes it, it I just seemed to me that you could very easily pick up another hundred foot of elevation if you just went up by the quarry mm -hmm. off our property and make a shorter tower. Wouldn't that be cheaper and more economical for your company? Um, well, we're, we're going to pay the same for the lease regardless, so it doesn't matter to us. But the construction will be easier, maintenance will be easier. Up, up the quarry? Yeah, the quarry really, has not expressed an That's interest. picking up another hundred and ten feet uh, yeah. elevation. You're right, but they haven't expressed an, uh, an interest. Well, some other properties on yeah. some hills, either way. Some, some did, and some that called me, we um, said no because the elevation wasn't as high as here. So you're right, we do look at elevation because, for example, I, I don't know exactly, I'm going to guess you guys are about 1,100 here. 
one of the persons that called me was only at 800. That means we're missing 300 feet. We can't build a 500 foot tower to make up that extra. That's well, just over 1,000 feet at yeah. the site you picked. It, uh, yeah, okay, so 1,000 feet. So we're not going to go down to 800 when we know we have a good 1,000 feet. <coughs> yeah, we, when I look for an area, it's not always as easy as there's a perfect spot, we're going to put it there. The landlord has to want to be interested in it. You know, we have to have zoning on board. You can't build in some sections because of zoning. So there's a lot that we have to look at when we do it. But you're right, I mean, it would be a perfect rule if I could drive around and say, this is the perfect spot, we're just going to put it here. It doesn't always happen that way. Mr. Strauss, just so you, I think you're talking about something off of Lackawanna Trail's property. Yes, I would be. Even on the property itself, originally when Barb approached us, she had already had two or three areas in, within the Lackawanna Trail property that she saw as ideal. I actually said, we talked about access roads, and, and so I pushed her in an area over there by the field hockey practice field and so forth. That is not set in stone. In fact, I, I sent you an email that's still one of the variables. Mm -hmm. It could end up still being, if we do it, near that stone quarry, but not on it. We want it on trail property. Yes. Yes. As a parent of two students in Lockwood mm -hmm. Trail school, school District, I hope that you do vote for it. Um, for two reasons. One, obviously, monetary benefit to the school. But our times are changing and our schools need to be secure. And if this will allow <coughs> someone to be on staff 20 or, you know, during school hours for our children's safety, I, I don't think there's a question. If we can find a way to hire someone to protect our children, it's the, it's the time we live in right now. And, and this also, is something we need to do. And I can also attest to the dead spots. <laughs> three times today I had to call my son because he had track practice and he got out. And three times I had to call to say, I'm here. Didn't go through. I'm here. It didn't go through. So I can attest to the dead spots from the minute you turn this turn to come up to the school. So dead spots I can deal with. My children's safety and security, I'm on board. And, and along with the safety, again, the technology, because once that tower is there, they can keep changing the technology to keep you guys updated in this area. So, okay. What about the, the health risks to anyone mm -hmm. that lives in that area or children that are going to be playing their yeah. sports by it? So yes. the way it works, and, and it's confusing and everybody thinks radiation and it's going to be dangerous. The way it works, the antennas on the tower are what cause any type of radiation. And, and they don't, they're not constant, they're intermittent. So they'll kick on a little bit and then they'll shut down and they'll kick on and they'll shut down. But they shoot towards the horizon. So all the radiation is above anywhere, nobody's standing at 199 feet or 150 feet or 120 feet. So there's no cause for radiation on the ground. And actually the FCC regulates. In 1996 they came out with a whole new regulation because they saw the tower industry was going to pick up. So they came out with regulations. What they've regulated, we are thousands degrees below on the ground from what they've regulated. So for example, um, a broadcast TV antenna gives you more radiation than a cell phone antenna. And um, when you walk through the airport through that security x-ray machine, you get more radiation there than if you stood under the tower all day just by walking through. So the radiation is regulated by FCC, FAA regulates too, and then also the, um, I think it's, it's EEE, Electronic Engineers um, Foundation, they're a nonprofit for safety for the electrical engineers, and they have come out with their own regulations. We're still below their regulations by thousands and thousands of um, watts and meters. The average cell site only uses 100 watt of energy, so that's less than most of your homes probably is. So anyone in a home nearby, they don't have to worry? No. Okay. Yeah. That's something that I looked into with the American Cancer Society they came out with a study and they said that no. Yeah, cancer yeah. society. I, I have a friend that's a scientist. And it's a non-ionizing radiation. So well, she argued radiation all day about that. that. And, and I brought up the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. and she's like, yeah, but, and she was trying to give me some articles and I read them and they were defunct, like, like 20 gonna, years old. The, the, the information exactly. she was reading was 20 years old. I'm going to say this. Um, today, as a matter of fact, 45 years ago today, the very first cell phone was introduced. The, the inventor of the cell phone, and it was a big clunky piece of plastic with a long antenna, and um, that was the first cell phone. The radiation from those initial cell phones and the big ones you had in your trunk that ran through the car, I don't know how many of you remember those, okay, 
those really yeah. did emit a lot of radiation. That's why they came out with regulations, and, and people did get sick from the radiation from 25, 30 years ago. Like I said, 45 years ago, they weren't regulating something brand new. Now everything is regulated and, and much less. I mean, new technology makes it so that they really can make it safer and safer and safer. So you're absolutely right. Cancer.org and uh, American Cancer Society both have documents on their web page stating that there's no cause for alarm for a cell tower. They actually say that you'd be more concerned about carrying one of these around. Yeah, you get more from doing this tower. than yeah. standing near a tower, absolutely. Anytime you can uh, use a headset, you should. Oh, sorry. I guess this is a question maybe Keith can answer too and yourself. But um, could you come back to us, say in a couple of years, and say, I know this you see it a lot going down the turnpike and stuff like this. There you see multiple cell towers mm -hmm. on a property. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? Or let's just say another company comes to us and says, We want to put a cell tower someplace else. Well, the okay. lease the lease will say that you can't do that because okay. we need to protect our carriers. And what can happen is, let's say company A, my company comes in and offers you a nice amount of money and you say okay, and then company B comes in and says, you know, we're gonna give you even more money and then my carrier says, I can go to this tower cheaper. They'll do what's called relocation and just move off that tower and this company's had all the money and everything invested and they lose out. So the lease will forbid you from having any other tower company come in on your property. That's the first question. Okay, the second part of that question is, and I'll use um, downtown Philadelphia, I'm working on four sites in downtown Philadelphia, which we're not putting up 199 foot monopoles in those situations. Because of the density and capacity, we are starting to do what's called smart poles. I don't know if any of you have ever seen them. They look like a street pole with a light on top, and they put a, a mini cell on those. So that when you do pull up to an intersection, you get your coverage, you don't drop calls from, you know, like sometimes when you're on a call and you drop in the city, they're starting to do smart poles. So that's one way in the city. In the country, okay, what they'll do is add more antennas and ramp it up. And I kind of feel like we're going to see less towers because the technology is getting bigger, stronger, smaller. So the antennas in, you know, 1990 were eight feet long and three feet wide. Now they're down to, you know, you can get a tower antenna this size. And I know there's one that's a Rubik's Cube that can, you know, supply a whole airport. So there's technology out there that's changing. The tower will allow that technology to happen in your area, but I don't believe there will be like seven towers put in this area. Plus zoning says, um, if you look at your zoning ordinance, we have to eliminate any other towers before we can build a new one. So if that tower doesn't fit within our search ring or they're already overloaded, we can't build a tower if we can co-locate on another tower. Gotcha. So there is that in your ordinance too. Uh, in your experience or your research, um, what has happened to the neighboring property values when you build one of these towers? Usually they go up and people think it's the opposite. But if you're a young couple buying a house, especially millennials, okay, I'll say it, um, you want to go where you know you get cell service. Most people live off their cell phone now. And they'll buy near a tower as opposed to not near a tower. If they, if they know down the road they're going to buy a house not near the tower but they can't get coverage, they'll buy near the tower. So usually it, it actually enhances the value of the property. And also if you ever sell the property, which the school's not going to, they can sell that lease with the property so it enhances the property value for the owner too. If they would sell the lease with the property. But the area, um, it doesn't affect, it doesn't decrease any land ownership or taxes or anything like that. And sometimes it increases depending on the area. If I could please have about four or five minutes to re review some information that I found about our contract. I'm not going to get into the argument about radiation. I know it's a safe for cigarettes were 50 years ago. I really believe that. But uh, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing the quality of our contract. May I read? What are you requesting? Of, uh, yes, uh, may I have a few minutes to read this? I had a lot more to read, but then uh, somebody back there said, no, you better cut it down to no more than one page. Well, you have so, an issue with the contract, sir? It's all about the contract and about our zoning. All right, uh, what we've heard confirmed up. Bobby, can, can I ask yes. you, do we have any input in the zoning? Yes, we do, eventually. 
Not immediately. We do? Oh, you mean no. speaking? Yeah, us. Do, do, do we vote on the zoning? No. No, we can and approach, we can approach the committee that does that. What's that? We can approach the committee that does that. Were we elected to do that? We're citizens of this county, yes. Okay. We elect them to serve us. You're not doing it as a board member. You're no. Doing, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. The property lease agreement, as you've heard, has been presented to us. This is the complete opposite of traditional leasing. It's imperative that we thoroughly review, not just for legality, as I'm sure our solicitor has done, but for the benefit to our school district. And it pains me to see the low rent, the bad lease language, and the unfavorable terms for us. There is no control over whatever our tenant builds. You guys can do whatever you like on that uh, property. You can make any kind of a mess that you like of it. We have no say in the matter once we've rented it to you. The agreement will automatically renew for 55 years, as you asked. It starts out at 10 years with nine five-year renewals at $1,000 a month, assuming we go with $1,000 a month, not with the uh, cash payment. There's no adjustment for inflation. With only a modest inflation rate of 3%, what do you think that $1,000 a month will be worth in 55 years? Be about, worth about 20% of that money. So that's quite a bargain that you get there. I would expect at least some sort of an in, inflation rider into that. And, and I can stop you. We will yes. add that to the monthly if they chose monthly. If they choose the one time, then they don't get it. Now, All right, I'm only there, going there on the contract that I've seen, the 17 pages. Mm -hmm. All right, the average nationwide yearly tower uh, lease rate is about 45000 That's across the nation. We're in a rural area. I understand we're different. We have been offered only a minimal amount that, in my opinion, should be where we begin negotiations, not what we accept as the final offer. Perhaps our rent should be stated as a percentage of the income that the communication facility brings to the operator. That would be fairer. The contract calls for payment on the first of each month. But there is no penalty stated in that contract if you fail to make that, not you, if, if the uh, tenant refuses or fails to make the payment. We have no right to seize the property to sell it to recover lost income. That, the contract states that we waive any and all lien rights on the property. The contract relies on the fact that the landlord, us, owns or controls that certain plot of land together with all rights and privileges arising in connection therewith. But I don't believe we have these rights. We have the right to use it for a school, but not as a rental property for an industrialized corporation. Fortunately, our students, neighbors, uh, are protected from a bad decision on this contract. The property is zoned rural agricultural. The property, just a quick idea of what we're talking about. This is Clinton Township. The red zone is along Route 11. That's the industrial zone. The yellow is the rest of the county. The two little pink squares are housing developments. Everything in yellow is rural. And what I'm applying here applies to the rural rules. The 246-page Clinton Zoning Ordinance was written to promote and protect the public health, safety, and general welfare, the natural resources, and agricultural land. It preserves prime agricultural and farmland and aims for the best use of land, ensuring that all uses complement one another and improve the economic, social, and aesthetic character of the community. Those are the words in the zoning, not mine. It acts to conserve the scenic views, again, the wording of our zoning, uh, of the township's rural character, and to conserve irreparable and environmentally sensitive resource lands for the benefit of present and future residents. No land or building shall be used or occupied in such a manner as to create an objectionable condition to adversely affect the surrounding area, and any such activity is declared a public nuisance. Now, objectionable condition is in the eye of the beholder, ask the neighbors. Our rural township is noted for low levels envir of environmental node, uh, noise. Microwave towers generate unusual noises that would have to be monitored and controlled. Applicants for a tower would be up against a hill of uh, conditions. They would have to comply with scores of restrictions to minimize the adverse visual effects of communication devices and support structures through proper design, siting, and vegetative screening. Finally, the applicant shall demonstrate that any tower and support structure must go where it is proposed in order to satisfy the function in the company's grid system. As we have heard, it doesn't have to go there. It could be moved around and that it shall not result in an adverse effect on adjacent properties, the character of the neighborhood, or adjacent property values. That can't be proven until after the fact. 
We have already heard that this potential tower could be moved to any of the neighboring properties with a lot, without a loss to the communication company. Before accepting an offer, including, in my opinion, this lopsided lease, we must exercise due diligence and have a full review by professionals in lease negotiation. Not putting you down, John. You know the law, but I don't think you have that expertise in lease negotiations for cell towers. To do less would be to fail in our jobs as directors. That's my statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scrouch. Is there anything you would like to uh, comment on? Uh, the only thing I would say is that the zoning map was created for a reason, and your zoning ordinance was written for a reason, and it doesn't do anything for the dead zones that come with cell coverage. So what happens in those situations, we try to go in and do a variance or work with the zoning to rewrite the ordinance, which is happening across the country right now because... I mean, at one point, I guess there was a reason for writing it that it could only go in certain areas, but now we have huge residential neighborhoods that take up 35 acres, and they can't get coverage in the center. So now that we're rewriting all the ordinances across the state, across the country, to try to get better zoning um, rights. And, and actually, um, government law out of Washington, D.C. is starting to take the side of the cell tower company because sometimes we spend so much time in zoning and so much money on zoning, and in the end, it is the same result. So there's a lot of legislation that's changing as far as zoning. And when you show where industrial goes, and that's a permitted use, and that's the only place you can go in a community, how many of you want to drive over to that industrial area to use your cell phone? So it, sometimes it's not practical, especially in a rural area where you saw the map, everything was yellow except for a small area. So we could put 10 towers in that industrial, and she's still going to not be able to call her son to pick him up from practice. So I will say that about zoning. Um, as far as the inflation goes, we do offer a an, an, uh, rate per year if you would select the monthly rate. If you're taking the one time, time sum, there's no inflation rate on that. So I don't know if, there, if you guys have other questions from his remarks. I'm happy to answer them. One more question. Why don't you just buy a piece of property? You could easily pick something up for 150000 around here. Mm -hmm. We could, but sometimes it isn't for sale or it doesn't fit our criteria. We do that a lot. We do buy it a lot. Mm -hmm. Joe, so what you're saying is basically just move it off to school property no matter what, hell or high water. No, I'm saying that's what don't I'm build it in Clinton Township. Our, our zoning laws... What about our kids at the school who have no cell coverage at times right now where they can't get signals? I think this is a safety issue. I think it directly ties the student to student safety, and I think if we can put money in our pockets and protect our students at the same time while not taking out of the taxpayers' pockets, our neighbors do. I think that's good because they're going to put that tower up, and they might just go next door. And if they went next door, because I live next door to school, so do I. I gladly <laughs> take, take that it down and it. I've got over five acres. <coughs> and you can stick it right in between the school crowds. You can put it in the okay? But you know where it's going to benefit the taxpayers most? On that school crowd. The 911 wants to put a, a microwave up there, I believe. That's going to and really benefit any response we have. And I can tell you, there's dead zones. We hit them. Keystone College, there's a couple dead zones for communications to the 911. The price that they're offering, I've talked to, I wish the fire company has a meeting, the one fire chief works for a, a cell company. He said the price is probably about right in the ballpark, what we're getting. Um, the only thing I would check with EMA or up there, I believe if you put the tower up there, it's going to have to have a 911 address to it. Yes. So if something does happen. We have to do that, yes. It's because yeah. they do that with all the well sites that are going we, on. We have to do that. And, and I will say that um, there's a program called Broadband for Rural America, and I don't know how many of you have ever heard of that, but it comes out of the Rust funding. And, and they actually paid a company in Pennsylvania to come through and try to build cell towers in rural areas near you know, where there are safety zones and, and dead spots. And um, you know, the government funded money to prove that that technology and that safety issue is important to rural areas. So that's another reason why, you know, it is important to have one in this area. The other thing that I'll say on top of that is you can go out and hire 20 consultants to read your lease and go over everything, and you know, that's up to you. I'm not going to say don't do it because that would not be right. But you're going to find that with market research, what we're offering you is a fair price for this area, 
for a rural community with probably one carrier going on the tower. So it's up to you to do that. I, I see a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into attorneys and lease experts and you know somebody else coming in, consultants, and in the end, it's the same anyway. So you do what you need to do, but I'm just going to tell you that it is a fair marketable offer. Before considering the new construction, have you examined the possibility of using other tall structures in the area? Have yeah. you approached and been turned down by other tall structure None owners? None of the other tall structures in the area fit within my search confines. I Excuse have me, the power, that power company goes right through just a few hundred yards, not even a couple hundred yards away On, from on a utility uh, power company? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, for us to do that, we have to do a certain kind of lease with the utility company and then it's not profitable for the tower company. The tower company doesn't get anything out of that because they rent to the carrier. At that point, the utility company rents to the carrier and the tower company gets nothing out of it. So in the end, it's a business. And sometimes the utility towers aren't either in the right location or they're behind a hill or they're just not RF. Because we did look at the uh, utility path mm -hmm. as well, but it didn't fit in with what we needed. We can't build, you know, right under, we can't build a tower right under the utility poles either. So we, we sometimes do flagpoles and put all the stuff concealed inside, but it really limits. We couldn't put public safety on it then, and we couldn't have a second carrier go on. So there's a lot of options. We could do options all day, but the best fit for this area is a monopole with an expandable top so that if we can get more technology in the future, we can always add it. So essentially you could build anything that you like any time in the future, and we have no say on it. No. That's what the contract says. No, the contract doesn't say we can do whatever we want. The yes, contract it does. says we will follow jurisdictional, so we can't come in and make a mess and leave, of course. And um, it does talk about maintenance in the contract. It does talk about how the compound will be built. Um, there, there's, it's very rare a tower company is going to come in and make a mess and leave. I've never seen that happen. Right. But I don't know what you mean by we can build whatever we want. We can't come in and build a house there. We're, we're zoned for a tower. So that's the only thing we could put on that property without going back through zoning. You could now, put up a 250 foot tower if you choose. No, we would have to go back through zoning for that. And we would have to go through the FAA to get lighting. So, if the tower company goes bankrupt. Um, it's also in the jurisdiction and the lease that we have so many days to remove the tower. So if they go bankrupt, they come out and they remove the tower and put the ground back the way it was. You know, as close to as How it are they going to do that if they're broke? Um, it, it's in their contract. They have to. If they don't do it, somebody will do it. And yeah, I've seen companies once they go broke, that's yeah, it. Yeah, usually, <laughs> usually this tower company is not going to go broke. I can tell you that. And usually, what they'll do is they'll sell off assets before they go bankrupt. So, like, they'll sell ten towers to a bigger tower company and then take that money and, and recharge themselves. So it's it's a really big business, and and hardly ever does anybody go bankrupt. What I've seen in the contract is that you do not have to put the property back to its original state. It says that specifically? Yes. The, the, what it does say, and I'll say this, by the way, if you think that will agree with your statements, I will say that it does say that you have, a, you have the right for 60 days or whatever, I think there's a specific date that says to remove the tower or else it becomes property of the district. And then the district would have the ability to sell off the tower. It's our property then. So okay. it doesn't say it has to be, no, if you would consider language like that, and the board, is that the board discretion, I would ask you if you yeah, consider we can change. but that would be a full board discussion, not just Mr. Strauch on his own, um, but he is correct in stating that. But I, okay, and also your jurisdiction covers that too. Whenever we go through zoning, they cover part of that too. So we sometimes the lease will be changed to match the jurisdiction. So I would have to go and look at both wording and, and make it match. With the, this tower lying within, uh, the area of two airports. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the FAA. Mm -hmm. um, does, is there a distance from an airport that it has to be? Because we have Siemens Airport here and we have Sky Haven Airport in the mechanic. Mm -hmm. What happens is you have to go in and register with ASR, which is Antenna Search Registration, and they tell you whether or not you need to do any type of flight path study. And in, in the situation where we are, we won't have to, but just to answer your question, okay. if, let's say we were putting a tower beside a runway, we would have to do what's called a flight path study, and we would have to make sure that we're not either in the descent or the, the landing or the taking off path of the, of the airport. 
so okay. we don't have to worry about that here because I think know. it's within. I was just wondering. I didn't know. I don't know how far. I forget how far they are when I did my. Siemens Airport's about two and a half miles. Three yeah, miles. I think it's within a mile. Within a mile. I, I knew there was a restriction on it, and there's a height restriction as well. Yes, if it's over 199 feet, the FAA requires we light it so airplanes can see it. If it's under 200 feet, we don't have to light it. Right. Rick likes that he won't have to go up and turn the light bulb. That will not be your job. <laughs> Good. <laughs> He'll pass the buck right. down. <laughs> I'm sure you've checked out the 246 pages of the zoning, but you'd have to come up with reports probably that thick before you can actually start construction. Start construction. Yeah, there's a lot of studies and a lot of proof you have to submit before you can uh, do construction on it. To this. the zoning office? Yes. Yeah, we follow their ordinance and yes, we it's, answer it's their questions. Quite extensive. Yeah, yeah, we do. We follow all ordinances. And sometimes, like I said, if it's in a different area, we follow variants. And then we go through that process. And everybody has a process. We just follow all the processes. Okay. Excellent presentation. Yes, thank you. I have a question for, first off, Mr. Neal, thank you for showing up. I wish some of your neighbors would have came with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm surprised they're not here. <laughs> but um, what's your stance on the tower, if you don't mind? I'm not against progress. You know, I think that uh, it would help, money would help. Uh, I was just worried about the health, health and safety issue and the aesthetics and, and you know, what's going to happen if something goes wrong and who's going to be responsible. I, I promised uh, some friends and family that I would ask members of the public mm -hmm. that, uh, that are local, and I know yes. you're local, and my buddy Dave Thorne here is right next to us. <laughs> 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 I own a property on the corner of uh, Tunnel Hill and Corby. Yeah, I know. I, I, just, mm -hmm. no, I could put a tower there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to move across the street. <laughs> Taking names. <laughs> yeah, right. But I don't think they're not going to put it here, they're going to put it somewhere else. Yeah. So. Well, but the thing is, we have to fulfill the carrier's yeah, wish. Like and if our tower company doesn't do it, right. another yeah. one will be here next yeah. week. Yeah. So yeah. somebody's yeah. going to yeah. fulfill the yeah. carrier's yeah. wish because they don't yeah. want yeah. customers calling saying they can't use their cell phone. Or, yeah. you know, I, I worked on a, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Renova, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. The road from Lock Haven to Renova had no coverage whatsoever. So literally, I would call people and say, I'm going into the dead zone. Mm -hmm while I did all my research, and I built nine towers on that road. And while I was doing my research, there was a horrible accident, and nobody could call 911 to get there. They had to wait for somebody to come, drive to a house, use a phone, and call somebody to get there. So, you know, that just substantiated to me that it is a safety issue if there's a dead zone somewhere. So, thank heavens the person was okay. They did have to light flight, but, I mean, it was, a, you know, a safety issue. So we built nine towers along that road, and now it's completely covered, because they do you know, skydiving and everything up there, cliff diving, whatever it is. So there's a lot of safety issues in the area. So it, it always helps to have coverage. Now when they put this tower in, will this have a generator on it or no? For um, backup? It depends on the carrier. Carrier, okay. And what, what they're doing now, the new generators aren't like the big old, you know, as big as that table and yeah. they're loud when they run. And the generators truly only run in the case where the batteries quit. Right. So like if the power goes out for three days, then the, the batteries eventually die, then the generator will kick in. I'm working on a big generator project with um, T-Mobile right now, and the new generators are compact. They're about this big, because they don't really need a lot of power to run, you know, 100 watts. And as long as they keep it up and going, they don't really need the big ones. So now we're putting in little generators that are, you know, as quiet as your dishwasher. So I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, because we have no power in certain areas here mm -hmm. for what two or three days not too long ago mm -hmm. and you know bad enough you know one of the carriers went down nationwide it hurt everybody it hurt emergency services you know mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. not the general public mm -hmm. but there was power you know yeah. typically there is a generator on site most of the time it's carrier driven okay. so you might see three if there's three carriers yeah. which i think is crazy you should yeah. share but that's that's my opinion. But um, I think, uh, depending on the carrier, and the carrier that I think will come here, we'll probably put one. It'll probably be, it, it won't be like the big old ones that they yeah. used to put, I don't think, so. Will they be using the existing power lines to, or are they going to have to put a new power line? They'll run their own utility line from a pole with a transformer, and then that meter will go back to the tower company. So all the utilities are paid direct by the, the uh, tower company. Is that what you meant? Is that what you, your question? Well, I was just wondering if they're going to put new poles in along the Corby Road to uh, No, because, well, I think, 
I don't know that we're going to be. They run off the same service as your house would run. Yeah. Off. They're just a, a yeah, 100 so amp service. 100, 100 amp, yeah. Sometimes we put a 200 amp in in case a generator or something has to work, but yeah, it's usually 100 amp. Thank you. Well, we appreciate the presentation and the great discussion this evening. It's not going to be voted on tonight, it's a work session. Yeah. It will be on the agenda for next week's regular meeting. Okay. So we'll have the re we'll have the final contract available for voting. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Roddy, do you feel confident that Sweet Stevens could get us a uh, thorough review of this proposed lease so that we can have it next Monday, or should we uh, seek other? Are you talking about a lease? Um, the, the draft. Some, uh, we have to make a few updates to it. And, uh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so what, what, if I could get your contact information or Matt could pass it on, then when I get the, the new copy, if you do decide on the one time, I'll send that to both of you at the same time so that it's quicker to get reviewed. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'll get that to you tomorrow morning. Okay, good. I mean, I, Matt will get it to you, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, Thank everyone. You. Nice meeting you all. So Thank, you. Thank 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 you.